Hello everybody, hi, welcome again to Queen Show. I hope you're having a great time wherever you are. Um, unfortunately, after three days of you know the crypto market doing reasonably well, I know where Bitcoin prices is above 4,000, yesterday, which is January 10th, basically was start to see the dip again. So um, as you can see in the screen, almost everything is down and, you know, Bitcoin is down 10%, 9%, right? Um, Ethereum 15% down, uh, XRP almost close to 10%. Basically, everything is in a rate, right? And um, the thing is, the analysts have basically saying that um, uh, Bitcoin now is trying to test the 3,500 level. And after that, you know, it might, if it can hold up above 3,005, then it'd be great. But if not, you know, it would be see further dips again. Now, why are the possible reasons for this, right? So it could be a multiple news, but then again, the first one could be this um, kidnapping of Miss Hagen. It's basically the wife of a very rich Norway billionaire, um, you know, who has been, she has been kidnapped actually since October 31st in 2018, right? Um, but only now they actually are making this news public because to date, which has already been more than like four months, right? Four or five months that they still haven't found her body nor her alive, right? And there's no tips whatsoever. Basically, the police are at a dead end. And the thing is then now that they're hoping to go public to actually, you know, hoping to get more tips from the public to actually hope to find her you know, hopefully find her alive, right? I mean, I, yeah, I, I really, I wish that, you know, everyone can pray for her and, you know, but um, if not, at least, you know, um, have some news, basically give the family some closure, right? So that's one of the, pos there might be one of these bad news because then, you know, this is not, this is also not the first kidnapping related to crypto where they ask for ransom in crypto right so miss hagan basically um the kidnapper has actually asked for 10 million dollar worth of cryptocurrency you know to be paid in monero which is a privacy coin right they cannot trace back who it is and there were also you known quite a lot of recent um this is not the first one right in 2017 there's also um in ukraine right where the ransom is 1 million south africa right a few hundred thousand 2015, that was a bit old, early days, it's 500,000. So it's not the first time. So why is the kidnapping bad? Because then, you know, basically it gives an avenue for um, kidnappers to actually, you know, more easy to actually kidnap and actually, you know, to get actually the coins in Monero because then it is harder to trace back who it is, right? So that could be one of the negative side that basically uh, bring back a lot of the memories that, you know, related to, uh, cryptocurrency, right? And of course, a new exchange, DS Dog Exchange, that basically launched on January 7, has basically, you know, only just few days of launch, they have actually already, someone have actually, you know, tested using a test account and have found, you know, that the when you log into the site, they is not fully secure. Basically, a lot of the sensitive information about the user, including their passwords and all that, public key, are being leaked out. So now that was yesterday, and that partly could be one of the main trigger for the, you know, dip in prices. But now they have responded that basically just few hours after that, they, they have responded by saying that they have seem to have solved this problem. Yeah, but still the damage has been done, and that's why the market is down. And then they continue to be hacking news again, a uh, scams on again starting from Twitter, basically faking, um, you know. Coinbase account that trying to promote to the Belgian non-profit organization to basically trick them to say that, you know, if you want to get more benefits, please send a small amount of uh, crypto into them first. So never, never send cryptocurrency into someone you don't know, right? Without doing any transactions first, right? I mean, if they ask you to, it's always like that. The scams always work like, okay, send me a small amount, then I will send you a bigger amount in return. So it's, it's actually playing on the, 
emotions of people, which is greed, right? So really, this is too good to be true. It is too good to be true, right? So these are all the, this, no, of course, this is again, my, my estimates of why the markets is dipping. But then again, right, that people are just really reacting to more bad news much faster than all the good news that has been in the market for like, you know, since like last year, right? Um, and I really think that the, to be in the crypto, really, it is more a battle of the mind, right? It is really who has a stronger mindset and who is more susceptible, right, to not be influenced by all this noise in the market that basically, right, say that, you know, the, the question I ask myself is, yes, it's very frustrating that, you know, to see prices keep, you know, um, cannot go up above the 4,000 level, right? When is it going to go up? Every time it hit like over 4,000, it will bounce back down again, right? It seems to be like that trend. So it's really frustrating, right? Um, but then I asked myself, right, to actually keep me sane, I asked myself the question that, so has the fundamentals of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency changed, at least the major ones, right? Or uh, the one when, has it changed? No, right? In fact, there are more and more good news, right? Especially like we're going to go into so much more of those later, right? And also I will tie back to what happened yesterday that was reported. And also then I asked what was the reason and you should ask yourself as well, what was the purpose and objective of, you know, if you have gone into crypto some time back and if you are, still have the position or if you have liquidated the position, what was the initial objective or purpose that you went into crypto very initially? What was the main purpose? Has that purpose or has that data point or has that objective fundamentally changed or has it has or has it been actually more supported with more positive reasons? Or has it that, you know, or could it be the scenario where you actually are not following all the good news, but you are actually, you know, more susceptible to hearing the bad news and because of that you are actually more scared than anything because honestly the kidnapping was very high profile in fact it was the top search on you know top topics on a lot of cryptocurrency sites right um yes it is a crime and of course we should you know give sympathy to the family but the thing is even without cryptocurrency these kind of crimes will appear it will um, it will happen right now that, you know, people have always found ways to actually do crimes, right? So this is just another way that they have found, right? And criminals are always very creative, right, with their ways. Um, so does it mean, and because cryptocurrency, you know, is a new thing, so it did make sense for the news media to actually highlight, right, such a high profile kidnapping case with cryptocurrency, which is again, it's easy to bid down because it doesn't have a solid, you know, um, use case yet, right, currently, but because it's still in the early days where things are still very volatile and you still have bugs in the system, you know, where, which the developers and the companies are working very hard to work on it, right, but no one really cares about what is the solution being, you know, developed by the companies, right? So yeah, no. Now, having been through the bad news, right, let's just put it aside, right, really. Now, I do see the market is really, really bullish on the long term. And this is just supported by daily news, right? Every now and then we hear a lot of positive things that are happening, but people are just not paying attention. And that's why there's still not enough people who believe into this market. We just don't have enough buyers. And that's why prices are dipping. They're just more sellers than buyers, right? The negative news are basically more welcome than people than uh, positive news, right? It's just the way it is. So first up, right, uh, after two days ago, right, basically there was a Russian economist that said that the Russian government is going to put a lot of their reserves into Bitcoin, you know, about 470 billion, right? And it can start uh, as early as February 2019, which is next month. So this is really good news, right? But the market didn't really react. But now on top of the Russia, you know, reserves into Bitcoin, we have New York City, which is actually committing $100,000 into having a 4,000 square foot blockchain center amid a Bitcoin bear market. Um, it is developed by New York Center Economic Development Corporation, right? And they basically said, quote, we are playing the long game, Anna Arino, the chief strategy officer said, told Bloomberg. It is a nascent technology, so there's bound to be uncertainty around this evolution from year to year, right? Uh, 
So who are the partners that are involved is include no other than Microsoft and IBM. So basically very big company. And of course, right, there was also a report not too long ago, early January 3rd, Early this year, it says even anti-crypto MIT technology review expects blockchain to become so mainstream in 2019 that it will become boring, right? Really, quote of the year, yeah? Um, not only that, right? They also, again, we also highlighted again that you know, Rocker family, Rockefeller family, which is really the richest family in the world, right? Although total wealth is really unknown, but it is really well known among the people who know, right? Among the banking world that they are the richest people in the world, that they already have invested in blockchain startups. That is in 2018 and via their venture capital arm called Van Rock, yeah? So, I mean... Really, think of it this way. The rich people are going into this market despite the long winter, right? That ought to tell you something. Next, also, European Banking Authority urges the European Commission to carry out further studies on cryptos. And I just quote the first paragraph. The European Banking Authority has published a report of its assessment concerning the suitability and applicability of existing financial laws to crypto assets. The body has made it clear that the EU Commission needs to study the blockchain space extensively to enable it to formulate robust laws capable of governing the entire continent. So basically, they're talking about right the need for very standardized laws around the EU because, right, there's already a lot of countries like Gibraltar, Switzerland, and Malta. They are fast becoming a hotbed for blockchain-based businesses due to their liberal stance and amenable rules for crypto assets. So another way that I take it is that some countries, you know, basically a lot of the countries in the EU feel that they are basically left behind because they, they are, you know, not fast enough in coming out with liberal regulations on cryptocurrencies. And that's why a lot of the investments on crypto and startups are actually flowing to the more friendly countries like Switzerland, Malta, and Gibraltar, right? And that's why now they, they feel that there's a very urgent need to actually step up the uh, standard regulations. I think what is what will happen is that they will definitely have regulations. It's just that you know, how liberal or how restrictive it is, right? So again, it ought to tell you that they're again in for the long run. They do see this technology, this invention here to stay. That's why they need to come up with regulations now, right? And of course, um, over in Asia, the government of Thailand is also very um, optimistic. In fact, they have done a 180 degree turn on their stance related to crypto. And recently, they have just in, uh, increased again, right? Their legitimacy and other four cryptocurrency exchanges are allowed to operate in Thailand, bringing the total company now operating there to 11 companies because they had seven uh, in 2018, right? So this is again very good news. So basically, the governments, uh, you, you already see a lot of governments Right, even New York City, which is very strict on uh, cryptocurrency, they still haven't yet have a very clear law um, on cryptocurrency. But they are doing things. They are investing time, money, right, in um, looking at this space. So that ought to tell you that their commitment level it is really high, and that means they really see this that you know it is here to stay in the long term. Of course, no one exactly knows when will really you know the market will rally again. But for sure, right, everyone knows that it will happen. We also have Nick Zabo, um, which is one of the very respected people in this space. He said central banks may turn to cryptocurrency reserves over gold. And this is exactly, basically, you know, very similar to the message that is given related to Russia who will invest 470 billion of their reserves into Bitcoin, right? Why is that, right? Basically, his main reason for saying that the central banks will more and more central banks will follow Russia's footsteps, you know, or intention, as we now only think, only know that is a, um, is a rumor, right? But really, right, it does make sense for them to invest because of the US sanction. You need to go to an alternative, right? So the quote is, the other problem with gold reserves is that they are physically vulnerable. When the Nazis conquered countries in Europe, the first place they went to was the central bank's gold reserves. So, you know, another reason why Bitcoin is better than gold. So that's why it is digital gold is better than gold because then, you know, you cannot, you know, it's very hard to actually seize Bitcoin from blockchain from a government, right? So yes. Next, right? So on top of, we know that Rockefeller family um, are investing in cryptocurrency backs, right? One of the um, investors in the most recent round that pour 182.5 million into bags. One of the investors is actually none other than um, 
Asia's richest uh, billionaire, Li Ka Xing, right, in the picture. So he basically, his uh, company is actually Horizon Ventures, right? So initially when the news came out from um, BACT, so again, just to recap, BACT is basically a new cryptocurrency platform that is going to be opened by International Continent and Intercontinental Exchange, who is the owner of New York Stock Exchange, which is very, you know, largest stock exchange in the world that they're going to make it very easy for institutions and retail investors to actually buy, sell, store, and spend cryptocurrencies. And they have very prominent partners like Starbucks and Microsoft, right? So they, um, this was about one week ago that they have come up with the news and say that they have got, they have secured 182.5 million uh, funding from a group of investors. And among others is uh, some, a company called Horizon Ventures. At that time, no one really know who is Horizon Ventures, but... Now it is reported that you know Horizon Ventures is actually backed by Li Ka Sheng. So that means Li Ka Sheng is invested in cryptocurrency and he actually believe in this potential, right? Believe in the future of cryptocurrency. Yeah, hence he is really um, and why is he betting on back? He must have seen that you know institutional money is going to come in, hence that you know he is betting on bats, right? Why doesn't he bet on other companies? Yeah. Um, next. So these other piece of news, the three other pieces of news I want to talk about is basically I do see a trend now that it seems what happened is that um, a lot of the media now, the uh, crypto, you know, more the more prominent crypto media outlet are actually pivoting to a trend where they're basically trying to improve a lot of UI, user experience, right? User intuitiveness of presenting the information, communicating, you know, the key messages in cryptocurrency news, right, um, implications, stories, using very uh, attractive and very um, compelling and engaging format. And basically, this is one of it. So Coindesk, right, shout out to Coindesk, 10 untold stories in video form. And, you know, it is very engaging, really. If you go into it, right, you can see, and I urge you to go into it. Another one, Abra, right, Abra is basically... Uh, it's an app that allows people to transfer funds. It's peer-to-peer -peer transfer um, funds using Bitcoin, you know, or other major cryptocurrencies, you know, across border that is really fast and they're looking to... So who are they trying to disrupt? It's people like uh, this remittance company like Western Union, you know, who basically Western Union will take a few days, right? A few business days to transfer funds, let's say from US to Philippines. But Abra can do it in just, you know, one hour and you can you know once people in family in philippines receive the uh bitcoin in their phone then they can find some agent who are willing to convert back into pesos fiat to the families right and that is also the fees are really really cheap right it's, um, about two percent versus western union can be i says 10 to 20 percent depending on the corridor they also have come up with a very um See, very engaging, cartoonish kind of uh, graphic depiction of, you know, the stories of the history of Bitcoin, of cryptocurrencies and to date, you know, so it's amazing. Yeah, future, the rise and yeah, so you should definitely check and also another website called Procurious is also, you know, they have this um, killer infographic they call it is basically what are the 16 blockchain disruptions right and basically i urge you to check it out the, um, so we have gone through the main themes now there's another partnership right, which i thought is very important to highlight is v chain uh, is um, one of the major cryptocurrencies they have based they have recently just signed up a new partner called entity.como it is a very um, you know, prominent company because they're the largest telco network in Japan with over 70 million subscribers, right? And it is um, not exactly sure what is their partnership, but it's definitely something related to the identity management because not too long ago that VeChain is able to put a chip, you know, into a sport shoes that basically, you know, allow people to track, um, you know, what was the origin of the sport shoes, you know, that you have certainty that it is a real product and, you know, if there's no, um, among others, you know, you can be sure that the, you know, which factory produced it. And you can be sure that there's no child labor abuses involved. So that's very good news for VeChain because these are real partnerships. And 
this is exactly one of those, you know, it's just like XRP are signing up real banks as their clients to use their network. We do need more and more use cases like this to be highlighted and then it will give some more confidence and more credibility to this space, right? But for now, it's still early days, yeah? There's now a new thread or new conversation happening in Twitter that basically, right, that is sparked off by Anthony Pompliano and asking everyone, right, among his followers and anyone in Twitter that what is the worst experience you ever had with a bank? And extra points if you name the bank. He had basically very popular responses, right? Now, the thing is, why is this related to cryptocurrencies? Because, um... Bitcoin, right, is actually born out of a lot of inefficiencies in the banking system. And that's why such a question is relevant. And the implication is that because of so many efficiencies in the current banking system and the current fiat money today, then, you know, an alternative like Bitcoin and major cryptocurrencies does make sense, right, for people to adopt. Okay. So what are some of the responses that, you know, worth highlighting? So first up, JC Powell, basically, who is the Kraken, who is the one major cryptocurrency exchange. He said, PayPal locked up all the money I had for six months, almost lost my business apartment. Bank of America killed Kraken's payroll account over 30 days notice. Chase killed it on five days notice by mail, which arrived after the account was closed. Found out when employee account, you know, employee checks bounced. Another person um, this is uh, Taylor Monahan, CEO of Cryptocurrency Water Service, My Crypto, revealed that Chase is also currently in the process of shutting down their bank account, but had already cancelled her credit cards right before Christmas too. So really, right, this, um, these banks are really, really not customer friendly because if you are, you really, really will not stop something so soon, right? Without even like, you know, a call, right? You have all your customer details on a phone. You don't just send an e uh, e a snail mail, right? You can literally just call that person and so that they can have time, they can have some leeway to actually find alternatives, right? But this is clearly not the way to, you know, treat your customers, right? So yes, yeah, so that's why Bitcoin and major cryptocurrencies have a chance, right? And that's why we need alternatives like this. ETF have been always in the talk, right? There's also because upcoming February 2019, um, there will be some ETF uh, approval decisions coming up. But most likely, a lot of the community have actually said that and, and they expect. And they will be surprised if again, it will be declined, right? So, but the thing is, today, Bitwise files with US SEC for physically held Bitcoin ETF. And this is uh, innovative because it's the first time, right, that the Bitcoin ETF that is said that they will have a physical storage of actually Bitcoin, right? So not just fiat money. So they're actually custody of real Bitcoins held by a separate custodian, right? And it is now allowed because they are new company. Wall Street firms, right, like TD Ameritrade, that actually gives a lot of credence that they are coming up with uh, custody solutions for cryptocurrency. So this is now possible. And it is hope, right, that with such a new innovation that they are filing, so um, that hopefully the government will take a real second look. And this is the first time, at least, you know, you are offering something different for the government to say, you know, to change their stance, right? You need to give them, give the government a credible, a compelling reason, right, to say why they need to relook at a crypto uh, ETF, Bitcoin or crypto ETF, right, because they have been rejected it since the last 18 months. And the last fun fact for today, right, is basically 10 years ago today, Hellfinis started running Bitcoin. So let me just read it. Hellfinis is one of the mad people, many suspected to be Satoshi Nakamoto, the mysterious creator of Bitcoin. A long-time cryptographer and cypherpunk, sorry, cypherpunk, Fini was the first person ever to receive a Bitcoin transaction. From Satoshi Nakamoto, he was enthusiastic about the project from the beginning. He posted the first known tweet about Bitcoin 10 years ago today. So this is, uh, this is, this is amazing, right? Because you still have a thread from, um, a thread from Twitter that is dated January 19, 2009, that he is running Bitcoin. So in fact, he was the first one to actually, you know, run the network, to, uh, mine the network together with uh, Satoshi. And, you know, he is able to uh, have it today. So yeah, so 10 years on, so this is amazing how much the industry has achieved. And, you know, in fact, it has definitely an early majority now, I would think. It's not yet mainstream, 
But I think we're definitely at the stage of early maturity because a lot of the governments are starting to be, you know, much more pro, uh, more, much more friendly towards cryptocurrency. And, you know, like EU talking about having, looking at standardized regulation, a lot of the, you see a lot of the rich people already invested in cryptocurrency. Now we just need more and more normal people on the street to be more aware of all the good news and all the fundamentals of this space, right? So that they don't miss out as well. After all, Bitcoin is supposed to be the money for the people, yeah? But it doesn't seem to be so now. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day wherever you are, right? Thank you and uh, enjoy and hope you subscribe and like this episode. Thank you so much.